What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am out in the shed today. As you can see, I got my loader removed off my Kubota VX to give myself a little bit of breathing space in here. Inside this box is an original tractor cab for the Kubota VX. For three years I've been wanting to buy a cab for my tractor and I just didn't pull the trigger on it, didn't want to spend the money. Um, but after watching some other channels who, um, you know, guys who've got cabs and, and watching how, how much they enjoy using their tractor now in the wintertime and plowing in a nice warm cab, um, I decided to finally get one. One of the channels that contributed the most to that is John Ritter's channel, or Ritter Bit Will Do. He's a really, really nice guy. We actually talk quite a bit. Just a super friendly guy. You can tell he's a great family man. He's got a few really cute kids and a wonderful wife, and he does some really awesome Kubota BX videos. He's got a beautiful Curtis cab on his Kubota BX. I think he's got the BX23S. He does lots of different videos, snow plowing, snow removal. And I spend a lot of time over at his channel. And the more time I spend there, the more I really wanted to get a cab. So like I said, this year I finally went and spent the money on a cab. Um, this cab cost me $1,000 roughly shipped to my door. Um, also, the cab came with a free uh, cab heater, which I will get you guys and show you a little close-up of the way this box is packaged and talk a little bit more about this heater in a little bit. But before that, I'd like to tell you guys a little bit more about this cab and why I chose it. The problem that I have with, you know, a hard cab is that typically when they're put on, they're not made to come back off. So I wanted something that I could remove easily uh, come the warmer months. I want to be able to just rip the thing off and I want to put it out in my storage shed and leave it until next winter. So I wanted a cab that was going to keep me warm in the winter, but not be in my way in the summertime where I could remove it and totally get it out of my way. That way it didn't block any of my sight as far as the loader goes or my surroundings because I do a lot of jobs in the summertime and I really don't want a cab in my way. I'm going to get you guys off of the tripod and down over here where I can give you guys a little bit more of a close up on the way that this cab was packaged and I also want to show you guys a little bit closer look at this cab heater giving you some pros and cons to the heater itself. Okay I got you guys off the tripod now. Just want to give you guys a little bit of a close up on the way this is packaged. Looks like it's packaged very well. Um, everything is in these little sleeved cardboard pieces and nothing looks like it's broken or damaged in any way. This also came with a free cab heater. If you spend over $500 right now on our website, they are offering a free cab heater. Now this cab heater, it's not the end all be all. Don't get me wrong. It's just an electric heater, as you can see. It's got nice 12 gauge wiring, gives you 15 foot of wire, which, you know, I don't know who's going to need that in a little tractor, but it's nice that they give it to you. This is supposed to get tied directly to your battery and I think it pulls something around 20 amps. It's got a couple of spade fuses here on the side. So if one blows, you could easily replace it. Um, you could turn this thing on fan or you could turn it on heat. And then here's your fan control right here, this little knob right here. Um, so it seems like a decent little heater. I can't really complain for free, um, but I also can't really say much about it until I try it out. So I'll definitely try this heater out and let you guys know exactly what I think about it. So I don't want to do a bunch of talking here. I really want to get to the install because I think it's going to take me quite a while. They say on a website that it takes about four hours to install it. But the good part is, is once it's together, they say it can be removed in just 15 minutes. To my knowledge, there is no other private like buyer of this cab who has done an install video for the Kubota BX. They do have a video installing this cab on a Kubota BX 2380, but they do not have any install videos on a BX 2370. So that was one of my main reasons for wanting to do a full install for you guys. Hopefully, if any of you guys are interested in buying this cab, you could follow my video and have a much easier time installing your cab on your tractor. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just start pulling some of this stuff out of the box here, kind of see what I'm working with. All right, now that I got everything laid out nicely in front of me and I can see what's here, I'm gonna get into the manual and see what needs to be done first. Okay, so step one in the manual is just to make sure you go over all your parts to make sure nothing's missing. Once you know that nothing is missing, you can go to part two. So I'm gonna start right here at step two. Okay guys, so step one is to add the bottom lower supports from the floor. Um, these are gonna support pretty much the entire frame in the front side here. So these are just like little L brackets. Uh, there'll be one going on each side. So I'll be pulling the floor mat up on either side to be able to slide these brackets in and get them mounted. So Kubota uses these little push clips that you have to remove. I have a little push clip tool, but you could also just use a flathead screwdriver and a pair of pliers. This tool is nice, it gets underneath them. You get under nice and tight, and it pulls them right up. So right here, it looks like I found my two mounting holes. So I'm gonna get the bracket installed now, and then we'll get to the other side. So there will be no lock washers in this kit, only the washers, and the washer will always go on the side of the nut um, and not on the side of the bolt.
Okay, so them are in place. I left this nice and loose like the manual suggests. Now we can get on to the other side. Okay, now that side's on. Just lay that down for the time being. Okay, now we can get on to the step three. Now we're grabbing our long upper post. This thing's about four foot long, and it is gonna be going on our lower bracket here. They want you to put the bolts in facing outward. We're doing one bolt with one lock nut on the bottom. And then on the top, we're using these door hinges. These are for the door pins. We're gonna slide our bolt through and we're gonna put our door hinge on there and then our nut. We're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. Okay, yeah, that's all set. Now I'm gonna move on to the next step. Okay, now it wants us to add our top frame braces and our cross brace. These are all done using just two bolts. I'm gonna throw the cross brace on first, which ties the left and right side together. Okay, so the way they want you to install this is to put the bolt through the main frame here and then put your cross brace on. And then you wanna put your top brace on with the angled end facing towards the rear of the tractor. So just like that. And then you install your lock nut. Insert my bolt, and then my cross frame, and then the upper support with the angle facing towards the rear. And now what it wants you to do is to tighten these bolts until this upper support stands upright. Okay, so we got that part done. Now we can move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're gonna install the rear supports. We gotta remove these two three-quarter nuts on the ROPS to install the supports for the rear of the cab. And these should just be studs, so you shouldn't have to hold the other side. They should just come right off. Okay, now we can install our support. Lays over just like that. And then reinstall your lock washers and nuts. And like everything else, we just wanna leave these loose right now until we get the rest of it together. Quick note, this side used the bent piece, the piece that's got an angle on it right here. And the other side will be using the straight piece. This is the straight piece we're gonna be using for the left side of the tractor. As you can see, it's totally straight. We'll just get them finger tight and we'll call that good for now. Okay, now we're gonna install our rear upper posts. Um, we're also gonna be installing the vinyl stay, as they call it. Um, the left side gets the bent or angled piece and the right side gets the straight cut piece of this. And as for the rear post, they also want this open part to face away from the cab. So you're gonna insert your bolt first then your rear post, and then your vinyl stay. And the only thing we're putting on this again is just a lock nut. Get this snugged up so it's in the upright position. Okay, so it should look something like that. Now we can go ahead and do the other side. Okay, and that should be that side. All right guys, so our next step is to add our top frame. So these two pieces here come separately and out of the box. And as you can see, they just slide together. There's only one way you can do this. Uh, so once you slide them together like that, you can throw it up over the top and this will tie together the front post and the rear post and lock everything in place. There is six bolts with six washers that'll be going up through the four corner posts and up through this top bracket. So this piece here should just sit on top of all four corner post here. Just get a couple bolts started here so I don't lose the whole thing. Alright, there's two on there. This thing shouldn't fall off now.
So the other two are going to be going on these upper supports here for the windshield. All right, so that's the four posts. Now I got to get these two front windshield posts tied in. Okay. Okay, there's one. Okay, so them are all on there. Not going to tighten any of them up right now. Uh, we'll go on to the next step here. All right, so now that we have all this together, now we're moving back here to the back ROP support. Um, these supports are going to be going from the ROPs to the cab frame here. Um, we're using these little C-clamps here to go around the ROPs, as you can see. And then getting tied to those are going to be these uh, little supports right here. And that's what's going to tie this top of the cab to the ROPs so that it's not shaking around. Aside from that, there's only one other piece we have to add, and then the frame is completely done. So now we're going to add the rear curtain support so it faces downward like this here so that goes on there and then we got two ROPS brackets here one is shorter the shorter bracket will be going on the right side of the tractor and then the longer one goes on the left side of the tractor so we want our bolt to go through the curtain support first and then it's going to be going through the ROPS bracket and then lastly it's going to be going through the roof frame here So let me get the longer support for the other side on, that way I can hold this, and then we can get it connected to the ROPS. Okay, so again, the bolt's gonna go through the curtain support first, that's gonna be going through the ROPS bracket, and then through the main frame again. Okay, now we can get the last two pieces mounted up, which are these little C-clamps that allow this to be clamped to the ROPS. For that, we got some nice long four inch bolts, and then you're just gonna be using a regular lock nut again with no washer. Okay, I got my nut on the other side. Now we're gonna get the other side on. All right guys, so here is the main frame so far. It's all finished up. We didn't tighten any of the bolts yet because we gotta wait until we get the doors in place. Um, so once we build the framing on the doors and get them all buttoned up with the door latches actually installed in the doors, then we can put the doors on the frame here. And once we do that, the instructions call for tightening all of our bolts down um, up until this point. So then we should be in good shape. And from there, it's just basically adding on the rooftop and getting the rest of our vinyl on the front and the back. All right, guys, so I have the doors laid out here. Um, this is for the left and the right side. I went back through the entire manual, checking over all my work all the way up till step eight, which is where we're at now. What they want us to do now is to assemble the doors. For the door assembly, we have these parts here that came in a separate bag with the doors. Um, these are the door latches, and these are the springs for the latches. And then it comes with some other miscellaneous hardware here. Um, and then it also came with these two bottom brackets. And these are the supports for the bottom of the doors. So that is where we're gonna start. All right, so I'm just gonna grab any door here. This is gonna be a little bit tough because they say make sure you have a nice open space to do this in. And as you guys know, I have a small shed. So this may be a little bit difficult for me to do. I'll try to do this the best I can and show you guys what I'm doing here. First thing they want you to do is mount the door latch, but I think what I'm gonna do first is get the bottom frame on the door. That way I have a little bit more to grab onto with this door panel. As you guys probably noticed throughout this video, um, one side of the cab uses like bent angled pieces and the other side of the cab uses straight pieces um, for the frame. Um, same thing goes with these doors. So we got one bracket that's straight and then we got one frame bracket that is slightly bent or angled. So the piece that's straight goes on the right side door and the piece that's angled will go on the left side door just like everything else up until this point. These bolts are gonna be going in away from the vinyl and then once you have that in, the door frame is actually gonna sit on top of the bolt. And then from there, you're gonna put your nut on. There, we got one started. Get the other side started. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up. And you should be able to just tighten these up all the way at this point. So we got both of them tight. Now what we wanna do is use this Velcro strapping to curl it around the lower door support and that'll hold everything together. should be the last one I'm not sure what this does yet I'm sure we'll find out eventually all right so there's the bottom of the door so now what we're gonna do is get the door latch made up and then we can get this side of the door on the tractor all right so I got the door spun around now 
And what they want you to do is loosen the scrub screw. Just enough to pull this rod out. All right, so now I got the rod assembly out. Now what you want to do is slide the spring on here. Just like that. And there's a little stopper right here. So the next thing you want to do is slide over the door latch mechanism. And then what we want to do is reinsert this rod. Once I get this rod back in place, I'm going to put the grub screw back in. And then there is this nice little rubber cap they give you that goes on top of the door latch, just like that. And then that way you got a nice little handle to grab when you want to open the door. So I'm going to get this rod back in with the grub screw. Then I'm going to go ahead and get the other door frame done. Because now that you guys see me do this door, the other door is the exact same way. So I'm going to get both these doors done. And I'll come back to you guys when we're ready to install them onto the cab frame. All right, guys. So now we can get the doors put on. The top hinge was not installed yet. It gets installed with the door. Um, so what they want you to do is slide the bottom of the door hinge in. And once you slide that in place, then they want you to slide the top hinge over top of the door here. And then they want you to bolt to the top of the cap frame. Okay, so now if that's on there loosely, we can get the other side on. I'm going to slide the door into the bottom of the hinge again. Now if that's in, I can put on my top hinge. All right. All right, guys, I got both doors loosely on, as you can see. Now what they want you to do is to properly align the doors while kind of adjusting the frame and moving the frame around. And once you get the doors fitting perfectly, they want you to tighten down all of the bolts up until this point. So I'm gonna do that now off camera. And as soon as I got the doors aligned and all the rest of the bolts tight, we'll move on to the next step. So I got all the bolts tight now. And um, I was a little bit worried about the doors staying aligned, but that was the whole point of keeping the doors closed while you tightened everything down. Um, as you can see, the doors open right up. And they close really nicely. So I tested both sides and both sides open and close perfectly. So we should be all set. Now the last two steps are to install the rear curtain on the back and to install the front curtain and the front windshield. So we're gonna do that now and we should be just about done. Okay, so before we can put on the front rear curtain and the windshield, we have to remove both doors. They should just open up and then you pop out the bottom. And once the bottom's out, you can pop out the top. And the door slides right out. This door out of the way. They do pop out easy. I really like that. All right, so now with the doors out of the way, we can get the rear curtain installed. So this just fits around all the main tie down points and then it just gets Velcroed. So you just have to kind of figure that out as you go. I'm going to start on the top and then I'm going to work my way down. All right guys, so I got the other side done. Um, wasn't able to show it to you because I just kind of had to be all over the place and it was just gonna be too hard to film, but I was able to leave my toolbox on, I think. You know, it doesn't look the greatest because you know, it's kind of smooshed in right here, but I really don't care. I can still easily see out this window. Um, you know, and even though it doesn't match the other side, I'm really happy to still have my toolbox. I could technically switch my toolbox around and keep it on this side, but then it's sticking way out where it can get hit by something. So if I could just leave it right there, I'd rather do that. Um, all the Velcro stretched right around it, and I got everything tight. Um, so I'll show you the back side here. You can kind of see how it's around the toolbox there. And there's the back window. There's the top. Let me go around to the other side here. Here's the back. So now I'm going to work on doing the front. So we'll be doing the windshield and the bottom cover here for the front. So let's do that now and see how it looks. Okay, this front vinyl part actually came in two sections. So I had to connect the windshield here to the bottom of the vinyl. So these two parts connect to each other through a piece of Velcro right here. And now it's just a matter of laying it over top of the frame here and getting it all Velcroed in place. So now the only thing left is the Velcro of these bottom side posts here. Um, before I do that, I want to get the slack out of this. So I'm going to get these springs attached down here. And apparently they get pulled and hooked underneath the floorboard. Okay, so I got it hooked on the bottom of the floorboard. That's definitely much better now. So now I can figure out exactly where my Velcro is going to go on the sides. All right, guys, well, we got the whole front installed. Now what we're going to do is get the doors back on. And there's one door on. 
get the other side on now. It's got this little bit of Velcro here on the back side of the door. And then there's this Velcro with the front cover. So these two meet together. Just like that. Okay, so now we can finally get the roof on. Actually, a really nice snug fit. Okay, all four corners are down. Now we can get our last four remaining bolts in, um, and they go through the side with washers and get nutted on the inside. All right guys, so I got the cab all installed now. It's all finally done. Um, I'll give you guys a quick little look of it right now. But I'm going to come out here again tomorrow where I can get this thing outside and actually show you guys a little bit better. Because in here it's just with the lighting reflecting off everything. It's very hard to make out everything. Um, but it turned out really nice. I'm really happy with it. Everything works really nice on it. The doors closed really nice. It's actually, you got a lot more space in there than you'd think. Um, but like I said, I'll go over everything with you guys tomorrow morning. And I'll see you guys then. All right, guys, so it's been a few days since I installed my cab. Um, I wanted to give myself a couple days uh, using the cab just to kind of give you guys an accurate opinion on what I think about it. And in the meantime, I also got the push box finally done. So you guys can finally see it with some paint on it. You can see I got my skids on there. I know I don't have very good light in the shed right now, but it's super windy out there. I know if I go outside, you guys aren't going to be able to hear me talk. Um, but there's the skids. that came out really nice. I ended up getting um, inch and three quarter bolts. Um, they're all stainless steel with stainless steel washers and lock nuts. Um, so them are all on there. I painted the back side of it Kubota orange. This is the Kubota enamel that they sell. Um, right from the dealer I got it. And then I did the inside Kubota gray. I think it turned out really nice. There's the other skid right there. Uh, as far as the cab goes, here's the cab. It turned out awesome. I'm really, really happy with the cab, guys. Um, turned out really nice. Um, it really wasn't hard to put together. If you read the manual really well and go through it and take your time, you shouldn't have any problem installing this cab. I also installed my heater, which I'll show you guys that now. You can see the heater over here on this side. I got it up here in the top left corner um, right in front of me. I'll show you the way these doors open up. So you just pull this lever here and the door opens right up. You got a full size door on each side, which is really nice. So you can use either way to enter and exit the cab. Um, here is where my heater is at. I decided to put it here because it's out of the way. Um, I could have mounted it up top here to the roof, but I really didn't want to drill holes in the roof. Um, and I could have put it somewhere behind me here, but I felt that this is the best location for it for right now. Um, so I figured I'd try it there first and see how it goes. Um, as you can see, the cab is nice and spacious. I got room to put stuff behind the seat here. There is no huge gaps on the bottom of the cab. Pretty much no gap up by the hydrostatic pedal. Um, third function valve fits fine, as you guys can see it over there. Um, the front hydraulic hoses come off the front. They left a little hole in the front. You just pull a little Velcro flap over to access the hole, and that's how you feed the hydraulic lines through to the third function um, from your loader. I went out back and did some work with it the other day, and I was out there for, I don't know, three, four hours with it, and I, I didn't have any complaints. Uh, visibility is really good. I'll get up in the cab to show you. So visibility is really nice. You can see out your window here, full here. They got a little tiny window down on this panel here. And then the other door panel, they got two large windows, which is really nice. To close the door, to close the door, you just pull the door closed and you just release this latch and it locks it right in place. So a very simple concept. I'm really happy with this cab. So let me get outside the cab real quick and I'll show you guys around. So here's the outside of the cab here. Here's coming around to the back. I like the way they built this back here to give you a lot of access behind the seat, to give yourself some room with your back and the high back seat. You could still keep your triangle on here. And I was actually able to keep my toolbox as well, which I'm really happy about because I keep a lot of stuff in here, you know, my pins and whatnot, rags. So I was really happy when I was able to actually work this cab around the toolbox and not have to take it off. So that was a huge plus for me. I have lots and lots of additional accessories coming for this cab. So if you guys are interested or if you have an original tractor cab yourself or if you're planning on getting one, make sure you stay tuned because in the mail, I got every single accessory coming that they sell for this cab. So definitely stay tuned, guys. I'm going to have a lot more coming on this cab and a lot more installs to do on it um so i'm really happy that i was able to get the push box finished in the last couple days and the cab finished so you guys can kind of see my entire setup and how it's going to be this winter so now i'm pretty much all set for winter now we just need some snow 
So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.